Okay. Thank you very much for everybody for being here today. Welcome to the Coastline Community College Esports panel. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, here we start off with who am I? I'm Catherine Amukte. I'm the professional expert for Coastline Community College. I was hired to start the esports program and start their initiative. I'm also the founder of Esports College and Career Pathways, where we provide, uh, we help uh, connect gamers and college and careers. So let's start out with Coastline's rollout in the esports program. Um, first, I was very uh, happy that you know the school had great support um, from their dean, uh, Dr. Dana Emerson. Uh, she was a great support in the very beginning to start an initiative. And then once the initiative was started and rolled out, then we have great support from our director of marketing, which was uh, Don Wilson. And so together, uh, they really have helped the school and helped the esports program at Co Coastline Community College. Uh, we first started out with a club, which we started with with uh, three students um, and we wrote the constitution and now the club's in full swing. Uh, we will be having two workshops in addition to this panel meeting that we're recording right now. Um, the workshops will be in streaming and also college and career uh, recruitment. I'm sorry, uh, college recruitment. Um, there are already two teams formed at the school, uh, which is Valorant and League of Legends. And I'm very proud of them. Uh, I think the Valorant team may actually be competing soon. So go Coastline. Okay, so we're here to talk about really the esports ecosystem and being a community college, uh, you know, our, our goal really is to guide our students through additional college or through a career. And that's what we're here to talk about today. And with our three panels, uh, we have a great uh, representation of what's available and what's, uh, um, you know, uh, not only realistic, but what, what they ca uh, students can do, uh, whether they're in college playing or they want to go ahead and, and do a career in esports. First one up is Alex Navarro. Uh, he is he played high school. Um, not only did he played, but he also was the one who founded the esports program at his high school. And while he was in high school, he was also worked as in the esports um, industry as a tournament admin person, which is how actually Alex and I met. Um, and since then, he has uh, created his own esports amateur team, uh, which uh, he's very proud of. Um, and he continues to work as a tournament manager while he himself is uh, attending college. So Alex, thank you for being on our panel today. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, you did two, to me, two uh, extraordinary things in high school. Uh, first, you not only founded your esports program in your high school, but you also founded an amateur league. Can you tell us a little bit of how you got there? Um, so it actually first started when um, one of my teachers really encouraged me to make friends. Um, so he had the idea of me starting a club and, um, at first it was only like six people. Um, and then one day our assistant principal just walks in and he's like, um, Hey, um, there's, uh, a league that's trying to get schools to sign up. Would you guys be interested? And we said, sure. Um, and then after that, it just kept on growing and growing. We added more games and then. At the end of it, before I left, there was over 150 members, and we were like the biggest uh, esports school in like Saddleback District. So that was pretty cool. Wow, that's a big deal! Congratulations. Um, so, if you were in high school, if you went back right, and you uh, in the beginning, and you were a high school student, uh, you had to do it all over again. Would you? Was it worth it? Did you? Was there a lot of time commitment, and um, did you get what you wanted out of it? Yeah, I would say it was definitely worth it. Um, the time commitment is very, very hard. Um, there's definitely a lot of things you have to do, and um, you just got to be really good at organizing, I would say. Um, but yeah. So if, if you're a high school student and there was not an esports program, because I think majority of the, student, uh, the college, high schools out there do not have an esports program. So what's the first thing that a student need to do in order to get, start the program? Um, they really need to search for someone at their school um, that's like a teacher or an admin or something, and they need to, um, you know, bring bring it up to them. And I, I'm sure there's definitely a lot of teachers on campus that would be interested in hosting people's clubs. Um, and they can also help with other stuff, um, like getting stuff, um, signing up for tournaments, things like that. So it's very important to find someone, like a really good teacher that's going to help you. Right. So it sounds like the key was that you found a mentor to help mentor you, as well as it sounds like your principal was also behind you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I couldn't have done it without a 
Mr. Marzilli. Uh, uh, yes, of course. Principal Elgin Right, right, right. I'm glad you gave him a shout out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Next, we have Zach Robinson. Uh, he's currently a sophomore playing at Bay State College, which is out of Boston. He plays a support role in League of Legends for the school, uh, majoring in management with a focus in marketing. So welcome, Zach. Thank you for being on our panel today. Uh, thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about the recruitment process? Um, you know, how difficult was that and, and was it scary? So at first, the recruitment process was a little different for me, you know, coming right out of high school to college. Uh, I'm moving away from New York to Boston. It's about a five hour drive. So it's kind of, it's, it's a decent distance away from where I live. So it's kind of scary at first, but uh, my college in particular did a really good job with getting me situated uh, with the dorm situation and getting me involved, uh, meeting new people so that I wasn't there alone when I got to uh, the college. As for uh, getting me into the college, uh, looking at my grades, giving me my uh, scholarships and all that. It was really fluent. There wasn't really an issue at all um, about it. So, Okay. Yeah. So um, you brought up a really good point. So it sounds like, you know, being on the team was a, a resource for you and it helped you kind of transition. Right. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so I, you know, I'm sure your coach is not listening right now, but so give us some dirt, like, you know, how is he as a coach? How is it, what is it like being on a team in college? Uh, Brian, you know, he's, he's definitely a character for sure. No, but uh, it, all seriousness, being on a collegiate team, it's got its ups and downs. Uh, it's very time commitment. You have to have a lot of uh, time between practices, your solo queue games and uh, your schoolwork. You have to keep a certain uh, GPA to stay on the team, obviously. So uh, you have to find that healthy focus between uh, schoolwork, playing on the team, and self-improvement. And then you also have to fill, uh, fit in your personal life. But once you get the hang of it, it does come natural and it, you start getting into the motion of it. It feels fluid and it feels great. Okay, so it sounds like it's a juggle. Um, it's a little bit uh, you know, challenging at times, but that it's doable. Yes, it is. All right, great. Um, so since you're in esports, obviously, you're playing you know, on the team and you're going to college and majoring in management with a focus in marketing. Um, are you planning on staying in the esports industry after you graduate? Uh, yes, yeah, so after college, I do plan on sticking around in the esports industry. I really want to figure out a way to uh, cooperate or put my skills into an organization and make it better and make it one of the best in North America. So yeah, I do plan on sticking around in the industry because it's what I know and I really do love everything that has to do with esports. Okay, that's great. So it sounds like because you've been on the team and you're active, you know, in the esports industry now, right? Do you think that's going to help you find your first job out of school? Um, yes, uh, actually. So esports is great because it's helped me uh, a lot with my team working skills. So other than just playing the game and being on the team, I've learned a lot of life valuable lessons and uh, how to work together in a team and how to lead a team and how to be, uh, you know, contribute your own um, strengths to the team while others contribute their strengths as well. So yeah, it, it does, it's gonna help me, I believe. Okay, that's great. You know, that's always one of the things that we talk about, right? You know, um, when you're on a college team, like, you know, Alex had said earlier, you know, it's, it's a resource that you, that you, it's available to you uh, for yourself. You're saying that um, it's not just that you learn how to play a game, but it sounds like there's more, that you learn teamwork skills as well um, that could carry you through in your career. Correct, yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So the infamous uh, coach, Brian Hummel. Okay. By the way, it's Zach's coach. <laughs> if you didn't, guys didn't catch that. Um, he is the current uh, Bay State College head coach uh, responsible for recruiting and managing the, the esports program and student engagement. Um, he's uh, recently been a guest lecturer and also a panel member. In fact, um, Brian and I met actually because uh, we were both panel members at the CEX uh, conference in Boston uh, way back in March. So welcome, Brian. Thank you for being on the panel. Hi, Catherine. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, so I'd like you to, if you don't mind, uh, tell us how you became the head coach uh, of Bay State College. Sure. Uh, so it was kind of a long process. It's funny. I actually applied for the original position and I didn't get it. And then it opened back up like six or seven months later and I reapplied and got it. But uh, I think they liked my background. I mean, I, I'd been playing competitively and professionally for over 15 years now, I'd like to say. Uh, the 
starting all off with Halo 1 and, uh, you know, going to LAN events all across the country. It was a good time. And then uh, I got, I really got into Gears of War. Uh, there wasn't like a huge competitive scene at first and then it really started picking up big companies like uh, Monster and Red Bull started sponsoring events. So uh, that was fun, made a little bit of money doing that. And then I got into Call of Duty, um, had a short lived career there. I actually got signed to a European team uh, that wanted to get into the NA. And then uh, it was for Black Ops 2 and it was in 2010. And uh, it, it, unfortunately they took off their competitive servers three months into my contract because DDoSing became a huge thing. And uh, they pretty much took all their competitive servers offline. So that was unfortunate. And then uh, that upset me. So I, I kind of took a break from gaming for a few years and uh, started, like bought a PC and got into that while I'm in college. And then uh, in 2014, I believe it was, a game called Destiny came out. And uh, although it wasn't a competitive game, uh, it was very competitive to me. I was top five on the leaderboard ever since it came out. And uh, I started a boosting service website. So we did PVE raids and PVB carries. I think we had like 800 or 900 customers a month. I mean, it was, it was really good money. I had 30 or 40 people working for me. And uh, that actually helped pretty much pay for three years of my college while doing that. And uh, that really opened my eyes to the fact that not only you can make money by playing video games, but you can do something you love at the same time. And uh, so I did that. And then right after that, I, I got more into the PC scene because uh, trials went away uh, in the year three of the game and uh, played PUBG. I got signed to another European team that wanted to get into the NA. Um, I was top 10 on the solo and duo leaderboards for four or five seasons. Um, made, I don't know, a few thousand in that. I mean, it wasn't the best money, but it was definitely a good experience. And then uh, I got out of gaming. I needed to get out of the parents' basement after like four months of living with them and uh, after college. And then uh, got a few sales jobs and uh, coached football teams and things like that. And then, uh, I don't know, I, I saw esports was a thing in college. And I was like, wow, this this would be amazing for me did some consulting for other colleges and then uh, while doing my sales job, helping them get their programs going. And then I came to Bay state and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not working at all when you're having fun, you know? So I just, I just enjoy doing this, but yeah. Wow. That's great to hear. I, I have to say that I think you're the poster child for esports. I think we just take your picture and your resume and then we just drop the mic and we're done. Um, I think because I think that you run the gamut, right? So I talked to a lot of students, okay, at the high school level when I used to be a team manager as well as, you know, at the collegiate level now. And I think the dream, right, is a play pro. So I'd like to go back a little bit in your career and talk a little bit about that. How was it like to play pro? Like, how did you get picked up? And how did it feel to be on this pro team and to be like the star? Sure. So, I mean, back in the day, it was a lot harder than it is now to really get noticed, I believe. Uh, so back in the day, there wasn't things like Twitch. There really wasn't these streaming platforms where you could set yourself apart from other people. So the, the biggest grind that you needed back in the day was leaderboard grinds. I mean, now people call you stat farmers, quote unquote, whatever. But before in the day, in my time, that's how you got noticed. So if you were a top 100 player, you're getting looked at by these organizations or um, tournament organizers, they want these big names in their tournaments. So that's how they got your name in the past. Um, and, you know, to play for a team like it, it uh, honestly, it's, it's really fun. Uh, it's a lot of time commitment and whatnot. It's not the best money. Uh, it'll pay your rent. But uh, if it's something you love doing and you see a future going for it, you know, just keep doing it. But um, I don't know. It's I, I'm just losing track of what I'm talking about now because I'm getting so excited. <laughs> but um, well, you know, so so the next step right after you become pro was that you went to college, and I think that I think that's the part that I think um, for someone like me, you know, who have teenagers, you know, in college right now, it's hard to fathom. Like, you know, okay, you do this esport thing, right? You get to go to college for it as well, and and while you're in college, have fun like Zach is doing, and so. I guess the next question I have for you is that you went to college, you played some more, um, and then you, what was your major in college that allowed you to now become the head coach? Sure. And just to backtrack on that last question, my apologies. And now to get noticed, I would say content creation, be one of those top streamers. But um, 
So what, what I did in college, could you repeat that last part of the question? So like, how did you, uh, what was your major in college that, you know, like, I know Zach is majoring in in marketing, right? And he wants to get into the esports space. Like what was your major that allowed you now to get a job as a head coach? To me, that's a big step. Sure. Yeah. So I I was an international business major and uh, something that really, really made me interested in that and what like kind of kept me up at night is I would play games with people all over the world. So I think, I think when I talked to all these job offers and things like that, they asked like what your background is. And, you know, sometimes people think it's funny, but I bring up the fact that I've talked and communicated for 15 years with people all over the world and getting to know their backgrounds, what it's like to live where they're at and just the industry and like their manuscript structure that they have there. So that was like something that really interested me. And I think esports connects the worlds together. So um, that's kind of why I got into international business. I was going to do computer science, but I think there was there was no esports in college when I went. Um, and there, there might have been a few clubs here and there, but it wasn't really games that I thought were fun at the time. So I never joined one. But uh, I mean, now there's just so much to it. I mean, there, there's full time coaches. These colleges are building arenas. I mean, it's it's no joke. It's the second most watched thing for ad revenue right now. And uh, people mm-hmm. are getting full scholarships to go to college for it. I mean, it can change your life now. It's it's not something to be joked about now, and it's amazing. Right, and I find that every day, you know, we're finding more colleges, you know, that offer a full uh, varsity, uh, you know, roster, right? Whereas before, it may just been a club. And so I think that the esports uh, industry is growing and, and exploding, really, not just growing. Um, so so after you did that, now you're the head coach, and now you do recruiting, and you're responsible for the team as well. And so I guess my last question to you really is that, you know, as the head coach, um, and, you know, you do the recruiting, you do team management, you're, you're involved with student engagement, uh, what's the key thing, if the one thing that you want your parents and say what's a key thing that you look for in a player uh the key thing that i look for in a player is their trust um how likable they are i mean how how you can talk to somebody um if if i can keep a conversation going with them i know that i can trust them going to events like this i mean i would have any of my players sit in these events because i can trust them with anything like zach was on a panel with you before um i i think that just me being a coach and bringing, I have a, also an athletic background. I mean, I played football in college. I, I was a three sport athlete in high school. So I know what it takes to be a team player. And uh, that's kind of, instead of full in-game strategy for some of the games that I might not understand um, that some of my players play, I, I try to create that team bonding experience and to really respect players. So to fully answer that question, I, I look for, you know, honesty, commitment, and their skill level, and how much they want to do for our program and for the team, what they'll sacrifice to ultimately get the work done. Right, so it sounds like being a team player and being coachable, as they say, right, and being committed and a hard worker probably is just as important or maybe even more important maybe to have a high rank coming in from high school. Oh, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, when when I started off, I was like, I don't care the rank. I don't care the skill level. If this player wants to be here and they're going to give me their time, I want them, you know. Um, Of course, those number one players will come along, and I'm not going to treat them any differently. But, I mean, they're – I want everyone, you know, everyone's just as equally deserving as the next if they want to give that time. Right. right. Okay. Thank you very much. And I asked that question because when I talked to a lot of parents, I guess the, the major thing, you know, like, you know, you recruited for football, right? They, the major thing in football is how fast you, you know, do you run, you know, how high do you jump, you know, um, there's very clearly skill sets there. And it seemed like, you know, in esports, that's still important, the skill set, right? That, that you have to have game knowledge, but that, that coachability and just like in sports, you know, that's just as important um, that a star that's not coachable, that can't be part of a team is no good to you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, it's, it's awesome. And I mean, yeah, sometimes the, the better players will get more in the scholarship money, but if your son or daughter gets into things like production or the content creation, or they want to be a streamer for a college, I mean, these coaches will all take every bit of information into consideration when they're, when they're trying to give your uh, son or daughter, son or daughter, their scholarship and uh, hopefully change their lives. So right. it's, That's it's a, a really lot more good than point. just playing. Yeah. Right, right. I thank you for bringing that up because I think that that's important to know that you know because stereotypically you think that you know the only way to get into esports right is just to play. You're either a really great, high, highly ranked player and that's it. But you're saying that there's so much more within that ecosystem that we talked about. Um, you know that they can do and be still be part of a team and even get some scholarship money. 
Oh, exactly. I mean, like I, I was reading an article, there's like 400 different types of jobs in the esports industry. And I mean, I, I want to create 400 different jobs in my college for the esports. So if, if these students can fill it, why not? You know, let's get them the experience and have some fun doing so. Right. That's great. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so uh, for our panel, we had some uh, questions that came in already, and so I want to go through them. The first one is, I'm a high school player. Can I become a coach? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Alex, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, you can definitely become a coach. Um, I would say a coach in high school is not necessarily game knowledge. It's more like being a leader um, because when you're in high school, a lot of those kids they don't necessarily come from a competitive background um so there's no sense of leadership a lot of time in the beginning um so when we got coaches in high school i mean we had an overwatch coach for like three four months and he knew nothing about the game but he knew enough about like um just like communication and stuff like that that um that's all we really needed um so you can definitely become a coach as a student. It's no problem. Okay, great, great, great. That's a, I think that's a good question because a lot of people think that they have to be highly ranked at a game to be a coach. So thank you very much for your insight. Mm -hmm. Okay, question number two. Do I really have to play on a high school team to play in college? Um, how about Zach? You want to take that one? Yeah, I can. So to, do I really have to play on a team in high school to play in college? No, uh, you don't. So there are players that play on the high school leagues uh, for esports, but there's also amateur leagues. And if you don't want to get into the amateur leagues, you can also just apply from your regular solo queue ladder, you know, rank, and then you will learn in college uh, how to become a team player, uh, how you fit in with the team, and what actual skill sets you can bring to the team as well. So no, you don't exactly have to play in high school. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Okay. Question number three. I'm a graphic designer. Can I get recruited for esports? Oh, I think Brian kind of uh, touched on that, that again. Could you answer that again, Brian? Sure. I mean, absolutely. And uh, if there's any graphic designers watching this right now that want to go to college, we are recruiting right now. So feel free to apply. Uh, but yeah, no, for sure. And uh, they'll, they'll get scholarships for doing so. It's, it's not a cheap industry. And I mean, they can make some money while doing it. So of course, they could definitely be recruited for esports. Okay, and thank you for plugging your school. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number four. Oh, will a scholarship cover the cost of room and board? Um, I think Brian again. Sure. Um, so it depends. Uh, some colleges, uh, the, I'd say like the Big Ten colleges, those ones, they'll, they'll give you full rides if, if you're one of those top tier players typically or a good graphics designer or something along the lines of that. Uh, typically, these smaller colleges like us, we're not going to pay for the room and board. But uh, we, we will give a substantial tuition grant where it makes the room and board, you know, a lot more affordable. Um, but I would say it's, it's a 50-50 shot, depending on if they'll pay for the room or board or not. It all depends college by college. But I think okay. it'll uh, adapt more and more colleges will bring that on. Okay, so basically, that's part of the negotiations, right? When they, if they get recruited, they should talk about that and ask that question. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, you'll always ask questions about the scholarship you should ask. Um, and when you're being recruited and you want to know what the scholarships are, ask how they, they determine these scholarships. Ask if there's information that you can provide. Like, I mean, I, I've had students come to me and they, they just give me their gamer tag or whatever it may be and let me do all the research. Why have me do the research when you can send me that you came in top 100 of some type of tournament, you know, send everything that you have, send your clips, send your highlights, montages, everything. Uh, that'll definitely help. So, uh, so basically you're saying promote yourself, right? So, you know, tell, give the coach all the ammunition they ha that you can, you have to help them build a good case for you. Exactly. Help yourself build your own case. And uh, it, it only makes the coach feel like you're more desirable. And if you put that time and effort into yourself, they're going to see that. And mm -hmm. It, it does save the coaches some time. I mean, we, we get hundreds of um, recruiting things daily where students are talking to us. So set yourself apart. Don't be that person that just messages the coach, yo, or hey, or something like that. Be, be super respectful, be professional. And the more professional you are, the more serious that people are going to take you. 
Hey, you know, that's a really, really good point. Um, because, you know, as you know, you know, I talked to a lot of players and you'd be surprised. I know you laughed a little bit, but you'd be surprised that, you know, a gamer would come on Discord, especially, right, and go, yo, or hey, you know, and they're talking to a head coach somewhere, you know, or talking to an administrator of a, a college that way. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I, I get it all the time and I, I honestly sift through those. I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't really, if you want to talk, you can, you can message me again, you know? <laughs> Um, I, I, all I ask for is respect. And so, and that's what I want to see in these players that are coming in that they have some, some type of respect and, uh, okay. that's all you can ask for. Great. Thank, thank you very much. That was really, really good thank advice. You. Okay. Number five, should I continue to play multiple games or spend all my time on one game? That's a really good question. Um, Hey Zach, what do you think? Uh, so yeah, this can be, you can take this multiple ways. So, uh, I say play what game you enjoy the most. If you're really good at a particular game or genre, uh, stick to that genre or game because you're going to be more happy and you're going to enjoy more time if you're playing a game that you're good at and you enjoy instead of just playing a game that you're good at while getting your scholarship. The, the worst thing that can happen is uh, you play a game that you're just good at but you don't enjoy it and it, it, instead of it feeling like you know, you're on a team and you're having fun, it, it starts to feel more like a job and uh, you're kind of just not happy to be there. And you, you don't want to do that. You want to always bring uh, good, positive attitudes to your uh, team and to everyone else around you. So, yeah, going back to that, I just say stick to the genres you like to play and what you're good at. Okay. okay. That's great advice. I think mostly, I think, you know, if you're good at it, you're probably good, you know, they're going to enjoy it more, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Number six, can I be a team manager on a college team? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Alex? Yeah, you can definitely be a team manager on um, a college team. Um, I think, um, like I said, it's kind of like being, in a way, it's almost like being a um, coach for like a high school. Mm -hmm. um, you don't really need experience to be a team manager, but you do need like some sort of like competitive experience in like a sports or something mm -hmm. um, to understand it. Right, um, right. But yeah, I don't think you really even need like esports experience, or you have to be a high rank to be a team manager. Right. Actually, I could answer that myself <laughs> because yeah. I was a team manager at a high school level and I do nothing about the game. Um, I, they asked me, I was like, you know, what Alex said earlier, you know, just a mentor, right? They asked me if I would volunteer to, to, to be a team manager for eSports. I didn't even know what eSports was. It was League of Legends. So to my surprise, it's a shooting game or a fighting game. I'm like, oh boy. Um, but I was a team manager and I think the only skill I, the only value I brought to it really was I was organized, you know, that I organized, you know, the tryouts, I organized um, practice, uh, make sure that they came in to the school so that they were less, you know, toxic <laughs> to each other. Um, and also during, you know, game time and so on. So you're right. Uh, definitely can be a team manager on a college team. But I think for Brian, I have a question for you. So at the college level, right, um, Alex uh, goes to a community college. So that's, I, I'm familiar with that as well. So yeah, you can be a team manager. That's not a problem. But at a four-year university, can a student come in and be a team manager on a team? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, there, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Like I, I know next for this semester coming up, I have a work study to have like a team manager where they help organize the arena space and get the team, like help sign up the, uh, or register when the teams can go into play and things like that for their practices. So there's, there's ways to get paid to do it too, um, without even being a part of the esports program for my school, at least I'm sure other schools will have something like that. But, um, no, I mean, I, I think of a team manager as like our captain and our assistant captain as well. That's like, they might not be the best player on the team. They might not even play. Uh, in these competitions, but they're the most organized. They're the most willing to learn and adapt. And that's who I kind of make the team manager uh, isn't a captain mm -hmm. or an assistant captain. But there's definitely other roles for it. Yes. Okay. That's a really good point because that means that, you know, you, again, I think that to be a top player, there's only the percentages are very low, right? Like someone like Zach or Alex who can actually play on a team or like yourself when you were in college. But I think that um, to, you know, there's so many kids out there that love, love the game that like to play, but that is not the highly ranked team. And I'm really glad to hear that there's other opportunities 
even at the collegiate level, that they can participate and be part of the esports ecosystem without being the guy, without being the one who's playing, you know, who's the ranked player and the star of the team. Sure. Yeah. Just to add to that too, like, like for my roles for the managers next year, that will be the players on the team as well is they're going to try to find their own scrims. They're going to connect with other players to get, you know, just different things, tournaments going on. They'll, they'll help find those. So um, not, it, it does lighten the load on me a little bit. That's not what I'm trying to do. I am trying to make everybody learn like us, their own role and love it. So I, I think that's definitely something that, some of these people will look forward to next semester is finding that scrim against one of the best teams in the nation or something, you know, and that they have that contact now. Right, right. And I think also it's a great, um, like almost like an internship, right? Like, you know, have experience working so that like someone like Zach, when he graduates and he wants to go back into esports, that could be part of his resume, right? That that's what I've done and, and the experiences I bring um, as a, a recently a graduate. Exactly. Yeah. And like, if you just go to uh, college and you're on a varsity program, you're going to be considered for that job before this, the average person off the street that has no esports experience. So, and then, I mean, they'll, you'll have your coach or staff administration as a recommendation to do so as well. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. So I think this is our last question. Um, I'm a, I'm in a community college. Uh, what should I do now to be recruited in two years? Oh, that's a big question. Okay. Um, I think Alex. Um, I would say if you're in the community college, um, you might want to turn to like the amateur scene um, and kind of go from there. Um, mm -hmm. Because when you, you just kind of want to get your like name out there. Um, I think the amateur scene is definitely like the way to go. Um, okay, well, that's a, well, that's a great advice. So like, I guess the next question would be, how do I find like someone like your, your org, right? You know, Merck Esports. How do I find the Merck Esports, you know, so I can be part of that team? Um, you definitely want to look for just like, um, just like Discord servers. Um, Esports CCP has um, a lot of partners with these orgs. Um, so that would be a good Discord server to join. Um, but yeah, you just want to, you want to go to like all the Discord servers that have leagues or has like a, uh, looking for players or looking for scrims mm -hmm. and then just get your name out there. Right. So I think something that, you know, Brian had brought up earlier was, uh, you know, content creation, right? It sounds like that's really what it comes back to, you know, that, you know, you go out there, put yourself out there, play games, stream, um, and be part of the community and find, you know, uh, part, you know, find, uh, you know, teammates that way, find, you know, amateur teams that way um, and kind of build on your skill. Yeah. Um, to me, honestly, I think, uh, the amateur scene is almost like resume building. Mm -hmm. um, it's like where you can kind of build your resume to go to either like these colleges or even like bigger teams. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what I kind of tell my players that are interested in going into collegiate. Right, right, right. That's great advice. Okay. Thank you so much, Alex. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're at the end of our panel. Those are the, uh, all our questions we had beforehand. Uh, our streaming panel, we've, we already have that. Uh, it was been recorded. Our next uh, uh, workshop will be on July 15th at 12 p.m. It'll be on college recruitment. Um, so hopefully Coach Brian will be back with us on that panel as well. But we're going to have two coaches and we're probably going to have one or two college players on that uh, workshop as well to answer questions. Okay, everybody, thank you again. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I appreciate your time and I appreciate all the great work you guys do in the esports ecosystem. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.